Some good praise and worship, amen? Yeah, good job. You all did an amazing job. As I always say, you're, you're singing like people who mean it, amen? And that's what it's all about is that we know why we're here, amen? Well, before I start my message, I do want to share something with you very quickly. Uh, it is time for our Willow Creek uh, Nursing Home Christmas gift buying. And we, we usually call it the angels, but they didn't send us angels this year. They sent us ornaments. And what we want to encourage you to do is that out in our lobby and the Connect Station, on the Connect Station, just as you go out the door, there is a wall there that has all the uh, uh, ornaments on it. If you would, pick one of those ornaments up. And on, their, on that ornament is the name and a, a supply of gifts that they would like. Now, these aren't expensive gifts. These aren't like we're asking you to go out and buy hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of stuff. It is basic stuff, body wash, shampoo, conditioner, lotion, and things like that. So we're asking you to pick one of these up and in the next couple of weeks, bring them back to the church, either in, in gift boxes wrapped up <clears throat> or, in a, uh, or in a gift bag. And so please pick one of these up and purchase these items and then bring them back to us with this on it so that we will not get confused on who they go to. And if you would also, when you pick one of these up, sign your name next to the name of the person. There's a sheet, some sheets on the, on the uh, countertop there for you to sign up your name by the person you've selected. That way, because sometimes throughout the years, we've noticed that these things are here one day and the next day they're gone out of your house. We, and sometimes people don't know where they went. Well, that way we know who it is that you were buying for and we know who is supposed to be buying for them. So please help us with this. This is a great event that we do and, and our church always does so well with this. And so please pick one of these up on your way out today and then make sure you sign your name by it. And then in the next couple of weeks, just be bringing those back to the, by the church. We'll put them in my office. And then on, uh, I can't remember the date right now, but I do know that we'll be taking them all to the Willow Creek Nursing Home. And so uh, great job on this every year. So we just ask that you do it again, okay? All right, well, Miss Carrie is now at the door. So uh, anybody in kindergarten, first or second grade that would like to go uh, to Children's Church, you can go with Miss Carrie. And you can be dismissed, and we'll see y'all here in just a little while, okay? Also, the other thing about the hospitality team that we had last week, those are in your bulletin again. As a reminder, please turn these in to the offering plate, or uh, next week, bring it back, put, turn it in. That way you can be a part of our hospitality greeter team, and we can uh, have uh, people scheduled to be out front greeting people and assisting. Uh, also, on the other side is the... Uh, is the ERT emergency response team. We definitely need some help on that one as well. Now for the uh, hospitality team, that can be youth all the way up. So you students, fill this out and you can help us be greeters in our church on Sunday mornings. We'll start that at the starting of the next of the new year, okay? All right, well today we're gonna to be wrapping up the series on thankful hearts. As we head into uh, Thanksgiving this week, uh, a lot of times as we head into this time, it's, it's, it's almost difficult to have thankful hearts. And you'd think, man, here we are at Thanksgiving and Christmas. It ought to be easy. But I mean, there's a lot of times that we don't have thankful spirits at this time. As a matter of fact, by now we're starting to get a little edgy, get a little grumpy, knowing what's coming ahead of us, knowing we've got to be at the family that we, that we love. Amen? Yeah. And so we, we kind of start getting on edge, and we almost, if we're not careful can lose that thankful heart. And that's why God has burdened my heart this, this series, this month, about having a thankful heart. And what we're going to be looking at today is how do we get that revitalized? How do we get that thankfulness that I've been talking about? How that, that thankful heart that I know God desires for us to have, that God has blessed us with the capacity to have it, how then do we get that? How do we establish it? Well, today I want you to take your Bibles, turn to the book of Luke chapter 7, verses 36 through 43 is where we're going to be reading today. And what I want to do here is I want to look at basically two hearts. One is thankful, one not so much. And see where we, what it is, what it's going to take for us as Christians to have a thankful heart. What it's going to take for the lost world to, to come to know Christ, to develop that thankful spirit as well. 
Let's go ahead and stand in, in honor of reading God's Word. Luke chapter 7, verses 36 through 43. <clears throat> and the Bible tells us here, starting at verse 36, Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him, and he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table of the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil and stood at his feet behind him weeping. <clears throat> and she began to wash his feet with her tears and wipe them with her hair of her head. And, and she kissed his feet, anointed them with the fragrant oil. Now, when the Pharisees who had invited him saw this, he, he spoke to himself saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner." And Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, I have, a, I have something to say to you. So he said, Teacher, say it. There was a certain creditor who had two debtors, one owed 500 denarii and the other 50. And when they had nothing which to repay, he freely forgave them both. Now tell me, therefore, which of them loves him more? And Simon answered and said, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. And he said to him, you have rightly judged. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. And, and God, we thank you for the love that you've shown us through your son, Jesus. And God, I know that you have called us to be thankful. You have called us to have thankful hearts. And so, Lord, as we go through this time, I, I, I thank you for the, the time we've already experienced of being able to sing your praises to you. And Father, now I pray that we'd have a thankful heart as we go into this time, as Lord, we could uh, realize what a blessing it is to be getting into your word, to have you speak to us, Lord. So I pray if there's someone here that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, that before this time is over, God, that you would call their name and they would respond to you, Lord. And Father, I ask for those of your children, Lord, who, whose spirit may not be thankful at this moment. Maybe struggles are happening. Maybe, Lord, they're encountering times of their lives that, that Lord, that, that, that cause them to, to struggle. I pray, Father, that today you would lighten that burden from them. And God, let them know who they are and whose they are. And that, God, we could have a thankful heart. We thank you for this season that we're, we're entering into. And we ask, God, that you... Just bless us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Please be seated. How do we have thankful hearts? Man, sometimes it gets difficult. Sometimes in our lives we enter into to times that, that we just don't seem like we have a lot to be thankful for. And we begin to lose that and we get kind of cold, if you will. So how do, we, how do we grow? How do we, how do we get thankful? Well, I, as I was studying this, I came across this, this quote by Oswald Chambers. Now, Oswald Chambers said this. He said, the thing that awakens the deepest fountain of gratitude in a human being is that God has forgiven his sin. That if we really, truly want to have that thankful heart, that if we really, truly want to have a spirit of gratitude, there's only one way to do it, and that is to realize that God has forgiven us of our sin. That when we realize that, when we truly realize that we are, we are free of our sin, we, we are now saved and we're brought into the family of God, that that should automatically go deep down inside of us to be able to, to bring up that, that, that spirit of thankfulness. Because, my friends, we need to realize who we are, and what has been done for us. And I think if we're not careful in the church, we can get to where this becomes old hat. And we just do it because that's what we're supposed to do. We just do it because that's what good Christian people are all about is that we go to church, we read our Bible, we go to Sunday school, we do this and we do that. And then the next thing you know, we're, we're just doing this because again, that's what we're supposed to be doing. God said, if you will go back to the point of realization as to who you are and what it took for you to get here, that deep down inside, man, you're going to have this gratitude. And this won't become old hat. As a matter of fact, this will be the coolest thing we ever get to do. Amen? That we get to be in church. Now listen, 
There's not a whole lot of people wake up on Sunday mornings anymore and go, woo I get to be in church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Most of the time we wake up and go, oh, it is Sunday, isn't it? Oh, yeah, boy, what time is it? Oh, I've only got 30 minutes to get there. Sure wish that alarm hadn't gone off and I turned it off and went back to sleep. Then the next thing you know, here we are, we're trudging in. But if we would somehow, as, as Oswald Chambers says, the, have that awakening inside of our spirit as to that Christ has forgiven me of my sin. That, that it would be, I would have such a thankfulness in my spirit. So today I want to look at this text and what we basically see are two people with two hearts. Two people and two hearts. The first one is the, a thankful heart. Now, what we have here is we have a, a Pharisee has invited Jesus to his house to eat. Now, listen, that sounds like kind of a, a nice, cool, warm thing for this guy to do. But you understand, he did not bring Jesus into the house to say, be able to say to people, hey, I've got Jesus, man, y'all need to come and hear him because he's, he's great. Man, he, he, will, he will change your life. Actually, what he brought Jesus there for was to be able to humiliate him in front of everybody, hoping that he could come up with a question or something or to lead Jesus into a conversation that would cause people to hate him and, and want to arrest him. This is what the guy was there for. But the Bible says that in that same house, there was a woman there. And the Bible says that that woman was standing behind Jesus and even being in his presence brought tears to her, to her eyes. The Bible says that she fell down and, and she was weeping in the presence of Jesus, that she was weeping so much that she was able with just the tears from her eyes, being able to have enough moisture there, to, as the Bible said, to wash his feet. And she took her hair and she washed his feet with her, with her hair. And then the Bible says that she was so grateful that she was down and she was kissing his feet. And man, because this woman had a thankful heart. She hadn't even done anything. Just being in his presence created this fear for her. Because why? I believe that she understood who she was. The Bible calls her a sinner. The Bible says that, that she was there and that she had been a sinner. And, and I believe that she had had an encounter with Jesus. And on that encounter, that, that everybody else was rejecting this woman. Everybody else was condemning this woman. But Jesus was there and that he forgave her of her sins. And now she was in this room where I believe that no one else ever even talked to her when she came in there. Because again, what manner of person she was, according to this guy. That if Jesus was really who he said he was, he wouldn't even let this woman talk to him. Wouldn't especially let, him touch it, let her touch him. So nobody even in that room would talk to her. But yet she was in the very presence of Jesus who forgave her of her sins. And she realized what had been done. Man, she remembered the, the, the feeling before. And once Jesus forgave her of her sins, man, it swelled up in her. That even being in this man's presence brought tears to her eyes. Because listen to me, she felt like she was doing something amazing. Just getting to be in his presence. That's why I say today, do you realize being here today is cool? It's amazing that we get to be in a part of this service, that we get to be in Jesus' presence here today. The Holy Spirit of God is alive and well, and he's moving in the hearts of his people, and we get to be a part of that. Praise God. And man, it ought to make us excited and we ought to say, man, this is the neatest thing I've ever gotten to do. And I can't wait every time we get to be together because I get to be in his presence I'm with brothers and sisters and sing praises to him. Because my friend, listen to me, each one of us here today, we need to understand and remember who we were. I was a sinner. I am still a sinner. I know what I was like. I know what Jesus Christ has done for me. And this woman had such a spirit of thankfulness that literally she fell on her knees before Jesus. And she was weeping because of all the great things that he had done for her. And that she was a sinner and she knew that. But she also knew what Christ had done for her. Oh, my friends, today, if any of us here could just somehow go back to that point and realize what Christ has done for us, Oh my goodness, what an amazing event we would have here today. Because we would all be wanting to praise Him. We'd all be wanting to fall down at His feet and give Him praise. Because we know, just that song we sang, Oh, I need you, Lord, I need you. Every hour, I need you. 
And we would be coming in here and our hearts would be full of joy no matter what's going on in our lives because I know that Jesus changed my life. And as he changed my life, that deep recesses of my, my soul, thankfulness would come bubbling up. Because my friends, we need to remember what Christ did for us. So we have a thankful heart here. Knowing what Christ had done, men he had forgiven her. And then we have though a thankless heart. A heart that was not even considering who was there in the room with him. He had the Messiah. He had Jesus, the Son of God, who had come to take this away the sins of the world. He had him right there, but he was, a, he was thankless in his heart. And man, here's what he should have done. I, I shared this in the first service. That this guy, if anybody in that room knew who was in the house with him, it should have been him. Because he was the one who knew all the Old Testament. Man, he knew it word for word. He could quote any part of it to you. And he knew that there was a Messiah coming. He knew all the prophecies that had been predicted. He knew all the place. He knew the place that he was going to be born. He knew when he was going to be born. He knew how he was going to be born. He knew all of it about it. And this would all take a place. This one guy of anybody should have said, Hey, I have the Messiah in my house. We've been taught about him. Man, we've been, t been teaching others about him. The, what the Messiah would do and how he would come. And man, he is here today. Y'all need to come to my house. Come and see, because I got a guy here that is the king of the world, the Messiah, and he could literally change your life. If anybody knew that, he should have known it. But as I shared with you, he didn't bring Jesus in there so that everybody could come see and have their lives changed. He brought Jesus in there with the desire to humiliate him, with the desire to catch him in a lie so that he could be arrested. He had a thankless heart. And as a matter of fact, we look and we see that he was in a proud position. Oh, don't you know who I am? Jesus, you ought to be thrilled to get to be invited to my house because not very many people get to come here because I'm selective on the people. As a matter of fact, it said, you're, you're one of the first ones I've had like this. And you ought to be lucky to be in my house. My friends, sometimes when we enter into a thankless spirit, and we, we begin to, to forget who we are and forget what's been done for us. We get to be kind of like this. And we get to be proud of who we are. Proud of our position. Proud of how long I've been doing what I'm doing. Proud of being able to be the pastor. Proud of being the deacon. Proud to be the Sunday school teacher. Proud to be the Christian. And we begin to laud it over people and say, Woo, God is lucky to have us. Because we get in that proud position. But then also, we get to be judgmental of others. We get to be judgmental. As a matter of fact, listen to this guy. Listen to what he said. Oh, Jesus, if you only thought it. Jesus, if you only knew what kind of woman it was that was touching you. I can't believe she's here. I can't believe she's even in my house. And so often, if we're not careful in the church, we can begin to think just like that. As we begin to look around, we look at the world, instead of seeing a world that needs Jesus, we see a world that, that is evil and mean, and man, we get to talking about them, and we get to not liking them, and then we want to try to say, well, if they walk into our house, well, what are they doing here? We don't want to be around those type of people. We don't want them to be an influence on us. I can't believe they're in our house. Because we get to be very judgmental rather than wanting their lives to be changed and presenting them Jesus, that we get to be kind of proud. And folks, we have a thankless heart. And this happens in the church if we're not careful, that we lose that because we've been this way for so long that we forgot what it's like to not be like that. Reminds me of Luke chapter 18, verse 11 through 13, when there were two other people in the room. One of them was a Pharisee, the other one was a tax collector. And you remember, the one who should have known better, the one who should have known everything about Jesus, should have been proclaiming the word of God. He stood up and he said, oh Lord, I thank you that I'm who I am. I thank you that I have been doing this for many years. And I thank you, Lord, that I'm not like these other people. 
Oh, and I thank you, Lord, especially that I'm not like that guy over there. But then we see, go over to that guy, and what the Bible said about him was he was standing in the back, couldn't even look up. And he was beating on his chest and said, Lord, forgive me, a sinner. And Jesus asked the question, which one of those left out of there justified? And it was the one who remembered who he was and what Jesus was able to do. Not proud and saying, well, don't you remember who I am? So we have these two people, two hearts. What God is wanting us to do today is to have those thankful hearts, that thankful spirit by remembering who it is that saved us and what he's done for our lives. Which brings us to this point right here, is that, that sometimes if we're not careful, we get into this idea that we have simplicity versus cost. We kind of lose track of if, if in the church, if we're not careful, especially if we've been saved for a while in our lives, we kind of lose the idea of simplicity versus the idea of the cost. And what I mean by that is this. My friend, listen to me. Salvation is simple let me say that again salvation is simple as a matter of fact it's been called a gift do you know how simple it is salvation is so simple that even a little child can get it amen it's so simple, even a little boy and a little girl, even they, whoa, even they can come to know Jesus because salvation is simple. As a matter of fact, I get real excited. And I, I, we've got another, man, we've baptized some, some smaller kids this year. And sometimes in the church, I know we get real worried. And, and when a young person, five, six, seven, eight years old, comes forward, we go, ooh, I don't know if they're old enough. I don't know if they understand what's going on. What's there to understand? Jesus died for me, and I need him. I get excited when little kids come to know Jesus because he made it so simple. As a matter of fact, he said, lest you believe like a what? A child. You can't inherit the kingdom. So we get excited. As a matter of fact, I've got one that I get to visit with this week who accepted Christ. Man, I'm excited to visit with him about baptism and all that. You know what? We're, I'm, I'm not going to get in about security. And I'm not going to get in uh, about all the, the, the Trinity and all that with them. They don't need to know all that yet. But it's simple. It's a gift. As a matter of fact, in the book of Ephesians 2, 8, 9, it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not of yourselves, not out of your knowledge, not of your great spiritual awakening and understanding. It says it is the gift of God. Now, I like that part. It's not a gift of God. Do you realize that salvation is the gift? It is the gift of God. It's, it's the only gift we need. But it was a gift. And it says it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone could boast or should boast. You can't walk around and go, boy, I finally achieved the heights of intellect. And I got to be saved now. He says, no, it's a gift. It's a simple gift. And it's so simple that really all you have to do is confess and believe. He said, oh, no, 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 preacher, that's kind of a simplistic way. It is simple. What does the Bible say? Look right here. Romans 10, 9. It says very simply that if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus... And believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, you will what? By doing what? Confess and believe. Do you see how simple salvation is? But sometimes, because it is that simple, we fall all over it. The Bible says people will trip over the simplicity of it. Because it's just, it's a gift. And gifts are not complicated, my friends. Gifts shouldn't come with strings attached. If they come with strings attached, they are no longer gifts. A gift is a gift that I give to you for nothing. 
I just give it to you. And it's that simple. That if, that if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I'll be saved. Now, so what do we have to do? Confess. Confess what? Confess our sins. I have to tell God, God, I know, I realize that I am, I am lost because of the sins in my life. And God, I have hurt you with my sin. And God, I have been separated from you because of my sin. I have to confess that. And you say, well, that's easy. No, confessing sin is sometimes difficult. Because you know what we ask a lot of times when sin is brought up? What sin? I'm not a sinner. What sin? But we have to come to the fact of understanding that we have sinned against God. And we must confess our sins. Say, God, I know that I'm lost. God, I know that I need you. And God, I know that, that without you, I cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. And God, with this sin, I must have it taken away from me. God, I admit to you, and I confess this sin before you. It's that simple. And the, then believe. Confess our sin and believe. Believe what? Believe that Jesus is God. My friend, listen to me. Jesus is God. Amen? He's not a part of God. He's not below God. Jesus is God, and we must believe it because only God can forgive sin. So Jesus is God. We have to believe that Jesus was born of a virgin, a birth like no one else has ever had. But we need to believe that Jesus was born of a virgin. We need to believe that Jesus was crucified, but he wasn't. He, and he died for our sins. Oh, but here's the good news. He didn't just die for our sins and put, be put in a tomb. The Bible says that three days after that, that Jesus was alive again. And so we need to know that Jesus died for our sins, but he was raised to new life. Amen? And that Jesus is alive today. That one who gave himself for me, he is alive. Praise God, he's not in the tomb any longer. And we can celebrate that. But listen, Jesus said also, if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and do what? Receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Listen to me, Jesus is coming again. Woo, God, give him a hand for that. Yeah, don't give me a hand, man. You give Jesus a hand because... He's, he's the one that did it, amen? But we got to believe. Listen, it's simple. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Nothing else. Nothing else. Church membership. You don't need church membership to be saved. Baptism. You don't need baptism to be saved. Baptism doesn't save you. Jesus saves you. You don't need to surrender to a ministry to be saved. You don't need to read your Bible every day to be saved. You don't need to memorize Scripture to be saved. Jesus said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. Nothing else. Jesus and Jesus alone. Amen? So it's simple. It's simple, but here's where we get in trouble. Because we think it's just, eh. I've been saved. Okay, I confessed him, and I believed. Good me. Good for me. And we don't think about this. We don't think about the cost. Listen, salvation is simple. It is a gift. Cost us nothing. Right? Oh, but the cost for it was enormous. And here's where the thankfulness will come. Oh, not because I was a good little boy and I confessed and I believed and it was so easy. No. It's when I remember what it cost for me to have the gift. The cost was enormous because the Bible says the free gift given to us cost Christ going to the cross. Oh, it was a simple gift, but it was at an enormous cost. What he had to do was complex. Amen? I don't understand it. I don't understand how he could love me so much. But I know that he loved me. And that he went and died and for me, for me, my, my Savior gave himself on the cross for me. I want to take you back just very quickly as I close out here. 
take you back to that room where Jesus was being accused. And, and the Bible says that people began to spit on him and they began to hit him with, the, with, the, with canes and they began to whip him and they placed a crown of thorns on his head and then they began to, to, to just humiliate him and, and, and do all these horrible things to him. That was complex. That wasn't easy, folks. I want to take you to the road where after that he had to carry the cross up this huge hill that the Bible says that he tried and he was so weak from the beatings that he couldn't even do that. That they had to get Simon to come and to pick up the cross and carry it up for him. Folks, it was a gift, but it wasn't easy. I want to take you to the, to the point where they laid this cross down and they threw him down on it and they spread his arms out and they pounded those spikes into his hands. I want to take you where they put the feet together and they pounded the stakes in through his feet. Oh, it was a simple gift, but it, was, it cost a lot. I want to take you then to where they raised him up and they raised him up and they came down hard and it ripped through his arms and his legs and everything that in his body was just was torn up. Oh, it was... It was a gift, a simple gift, but it costs a lot. I want to take you then, as he was even in the midst of all of this, crying out, Father, why have you forsaken me? Oh, it was a simple gift, but it costs a lot. Then I want to take you to where he was standing there. As he was hanging on the cross, he looked up and he said, Father, into the, your hands I commend my spirit. And then he cries out, it is finished. Oh, it was a simple gift. But the cost was enormous. Then I want to take you to where they had to take him off of that cross. They wrapped him up and they laid him in a tomb where he, they thought that they were going to come back after the Sabbath and they were going to, 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 to put the, the, the stuff on his body and get, prepare him for burial, that there he would lay forever. They saw Jesus wrapped up and put in a tomb. Oh, listen to me. The, the gift was simple. But the cost was enormous. Then I want to take you three days later when they came to that tomb to prepare his body for burial. And the Bible says the tomb, the, the stone was rolled away, not just rolled over, the, thro the tomb was thrown away, the rock was thrown away. And the tomb was empty. And Jesus was alive again. Oh, listen to me. The gift was simple. But the cost was enormous. Oh, and if we could... Somehow this holiday season, during Thanksgiving, oh, my friend, if we could just somehow go back to that every day and say, oh, God, thank you for that salvation. It was so easy for me. It was so simple for me. Oh, but it costs you, and it was an enormous cost. And oh, I thank you for it. My friends, we would not be able to sit in here and just worry and think, oh, I wish this would hurry up so I could get out of here because this could be the coolest thing we could do all week. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for what you've done for me. Because I know who I am, and I know what manner of person I was. And I don't deserve any of this, but thank you. And from that, from the very deepest parts of who we are, Thanksgiving would come bubbling out. That, my friend, is how you get a thankful heart. That's how you get it, by remembering. Remembering. The very simple gift of salvation. But then remembering how much it cost. Let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you and we thank you. Oh, we thank you with all of our hearts for what you've done for us, God. How you loved us so much that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for us. And God, I ask this morning that if there be anyone here in this room, as I look across this congregation, Lord, if there be anyone in this room, that has never given their heart to you, never received the very simple gift of salvation. Oh, that God, that they would be remembering today who they are and what sin is in their life. And God, they would turn that sin over to you. They would confess it before you today. Lord, if they've been waiting on anything else to, to save them, Lord, they've been depending on other things to save them, but today, Lord, they would come to know you as their Savior by confessing their sins, believing in you and what you've done for them. Oh, my friend, if that's you this morning, I want you to call on his name. God has given you a simple gift. It's a gift of salvation, gift of eternal life, gift of blessing, gift of peace right now. And it can be yours. Oh, but you have to confess. 
confess those sins, would you just confess those before him now? And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Jesus is alive. Would you believe that today? Would you call on his name, receiving him into your life this morning? Oh, it's that simple, but it's that necessary. We'll have people down front here in just a moment that want to pray with you. If you don't, if you just need some help, but if you don't, man, right there where you are, you can be saved. Come to know him today. Oh, Christian, listen to me. Maybe you're here this morning and that thankful heart, you realize that you don't have it. Man, you've been judgmental, cynical. You've even had a streak of meanness in you. A streak of not caring. Oh, I care for people, but boy, the thing of God, I just kind of lost that. Oh, today, would you call upon his name and say, God, restore me to the joy of your salvation. God, I, I, I want to be, have a thankful heart again. Remind me, God, of the simple gift, but oh, also more than anything, remind me of the exorbitant amount that it cost that I could be thankful again. Father, hear our prayer this morning as we enter back into this time of praise and worship, Father, that we could sing this praise to you. Oh, my friend, as we get ready to stand in just a moment, I want you to sing with all your heart. But if Jesus is speaking to you, would you come this morning? Have you truly been saved? Have you truly given your heart to Jesus? Are you depending on Jesus only? Nothing else. Nothing else. If you depended on something else, you need to call on the name of Jesus today. Would you come? Would you come? In just a moment, we're going to stand. We have people down front that are ready. You don't need us, but we're here for you if you need us, if you want us. Oh, Father, hear our prayer. In the name of Jesus, amen. Would you stand with me as we sing?